Hey guys, I decided I'm going to build myself a filtering system from that drain, that tank, comes down, and you'll see how I adapted and built a filtering. Now what I did is I took a regular mason jar, quart size, doubled the lid thicknesses, drilled it, and put these, I put these bulkhead adapters in here, and they're in the, in the jar, and then I put a oil-proof silicon seal all the way around everything. This is going to be just disposable. Then there's one of these big scrubber pads that you use for pots and pans. And it's about a dollar. And what I did is the incoming pipe, you see here, goes all the way to the bottom, right there. And it drains into this medium. And then over here is about a two-inch long pipe that comes in and it picks up. And that is what I will now feed my oil to my tank. So this is about nine feet up where this is at compared to my tank, so I get very good gravity feed. And for the first time, hopefully with no leaks, <laughs> on video, I'm going to crank it on. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Oop, I see oil. <laughs> Now, it might not flow in too fast because I don't have the valve open on the other side. So, it'll have to actually push its air out. And we can go down. What I did in addition to this was I added this valve and this little stainless steel strainer in here. Because this was working good, but I kept getting oil sludge um, particles up from my stuff. So, I think what we're, what we're going to get here is we're just going to get air and you'll see maybe a little oil will come out. Oh, draining. That's what, that's what the uh, bowl's for. And we'll kick it on. And then we'll get over here and we'll see this thing if it's filling up. Looks like it is filling up. All right, I'm gonna cut while I get this thing filled up and then I'll do a short video showing you how that, how that is going to take any kind of leaves and grass debris that might be in used mold oil that you get, plastic parts, metal parts, it'll, it should be able to collect it going through that medium. All right, now this is a uh, notable success for this right here. So it's just getting fired up. I just turned the fire on, so it's in the process. And a little smoke come out there. This is the size. Now remember, this is not a very big T. And you can see by the size of my finger how big that stream of oil is. I couldn't get that pure level of oil in before. And even with my starter fuel injection and everything else, I would get stoppages in this where it would get trapped in this valve. And so I decided I'd put one of these in and it is a stainless steel and it has a strainer in it. You can take that off, turn this off, take that out, clean it, which is excellent. And then I learned, wow, I held everything from grass, leaf, uh, grass and leaves to bark was in some of this oil that I got for free. And even when you strain it, which I did, uh, putting it in, uh, it, it just was not being very successful. So, I made that, as you'll see in the beginning of the video, and it is, so far, I did put this down here at the bottom to make sure if it was to drip, but so far it's good. I had to put me a little shelf in because that kind of got a little bit heavy and was pulling on that copper. And I don't want it to tug on any of these fittings. So strapped it off and now it's flowing. And what's really weird, look, open space in the top of the jar, even though the oil is being pushed up because that tube there is about right here. So it's pushing it up through that tube and it's that, as long as that airspace there, I know it ain't leaking because it ain't pushing the air out from there. And oil drains, of course, there. 
all the way back to my uh, my heater unit so how'd you like that not too bad a bulk filter this is just going to be disposable I'll just take and just rip this apart redo it with new stuff later um, but I'll probably get a good two three years out of that and that's a lot of volume right there and it'll stop a lot of trash with that stainless steel mesh that's in it that uh, big uh, scouring pad here we are up and running now and the oil volume is just literally a fast drip oh there it goes again see I got trash in it see that that's washing some of that trash out and it's just going to be a matter of working it clean now and running it at about the size of a mechanical pencil lead that's about the size of a mechanical pencil lead in there that stream see anybody who wanted to know what that was that's a little brass cup that got brazed onto the end of a piece of 3 8 copper 3 8 od copper and it's it's like a little funnel and it's it's embedded inside of this with an epoxy and that worked perfect for this purpose but she's starting firing up good now she's been burning dirty because she's cold but she'll clean up here shortly and we even got some fire in the pan there so, all right well that is uh one of the things you might want to do when you do it get some get a uh, final filter and then put you in a bulk filter which is what that is right there now okay that's my bulk filter and it seems to be doing pretty damn good because I already seen a few things spit down in that pipe when it first got filled up of uh, debris. All right, guys. Oh, for you guys who might under not understand what's in here, this is a smaller version of what I used okay that's where the fluid is coming through that's a it's just under it's, it's a little over an eighth a little under a quarter i call it probably three sixteenths um and that is what is in here right in here okay and this one here is a little smaller cup version of that and you can get it at a welding shop it's actually what you hook up for your gas in your welding machines put your hose on and you can just take a look at that now that fits inside of 3 8 pipe. It's barbed, but I brazed it on. So that's what's inside of here. And then what I did is I slipped a bronze washer up into here so it would stop at the top of that 3 quarter inch pipe. And, and then what I did is I just used an epoxy and filled the whole area with an epoxy and then pulled it down tight. And, right, and I did all that before I reconnected this. So I had the copper pipe hanging out that union, just a long piece of it. And uh, the pipe inside, I put on a bender. It don't have a 90, so it's on a bender, and it sweeps down. So what I was able to do is fish that copper pipe in the center, and once it got about a foot in there, then I had my little uh, uh, tabs that I raised on it to sit, you know, to center it in the pipe, and it got almost to the end down there, and I and I got about another foot and a half in, and had another set of tabs that center it in the pipe, and there's three of them all together going down the length of that inch and a quarter pipe and then brought it all the way up and the excess I cut off down there inside the stove. And that way that was made bent and then it was just a long piece of copper hanging off before I slid it up inside there and then tied that union down. So if you're wondering how to get it in there, that's it. So that's brazed on, the copper will hang out the, uh, the, bottom, the bottom of this and it'll stay loose up here so that you can turn that fitting on and then you shoot your epoxy in with a with a uh, um, one of those two-part epoxies in around it and then just take and put a wedge in there to press it into place and it'll stay and it ain't going to go nowhere and that's how your oil drips and then the same almost identical thing is an air fitting let me show you this My air box is just an air fitting that goes up in the bottom of your valve and it is it is into another piece of brass which is like this piece right here and what i did is i just took one of them that's almost like it with a half inch see that's half inch there this is half inch 
And I took it, just drilled it out, and then slid that one inside there and then brazed it together. So that way you have this inside draining down into one of these. Now, like I said, this is the smaller version. The other one's got a little bit bigger cup, the one that's in here. But this is what I used in the copper. Left it loose, loose from epoxying before. Uh, and then I turned all these fittings, spun all these fittings together. And while it just sat there and they're not getting spun on. And then I uh, shot the epoxy and put a wedge in there to shove it down with this washer. Had a washer I drilled out to fit. To fill that bottom of that T and just pushed it down and shot it full of epoxy and that is how the air i mean how the oil travels down and the air shoots around the pipe to keep it cool and hopefully that helps pretty simple structural design all right guys those are just some simple off-the-shelf air and gas parts all right 